wrong direction. This is your captain speaking. Never question your captain. Yo, NBC, thank you very much for the brand new Prime. Thank you very, very much. I really appreciate you using your Prime here, man. Thank you. Why shouldn't I question the captain? That sounds like questioning the captain. I'll have you know that's grounds for mutiny. <laughs> now you're getting it. <laughs> that's a bad one. It's not that kind of ship. Sleeping. Just sneak by it. Sneak by it and grab the treasure. I guess you're right. I should have said that's potential mutiny, not grounds for mutiny. C. Dargan. When enveloped in its galvanizing flames, it will unleash powerful fiery counterattacks. Poisoning it will quench its flames and pressure it. Only lightning aspected attacks will fill the stagger gauge. Okay, this guy's way more unique. It surely sleeps with one eye open as none have yet laid a finger on its booty. Relatable. This guy does a million damage. I'm just chilling over here and be hurting. Man, I, I was all buffed up. Now I gotta get all buffed up again. How could you do this? Hawk, thank you very much for the four months. F-U-F. Touch me F. Whoa, look at that pressure gauge go. This move, this move can go all the way up to level three if you have three ATBs, but it does nines on level two. <laughs> it's like no reason to even do that. I don't even think it's magic related. Like, it adds the element, but I think it's physical. And I, I'm doing, like, a magic build on her. It still does max damage. It's insane. Oh, 
I am currently at 94 hours. Fast travel's unavailable. Should I be worried? Nothing's gonna jump me, is it? Fine, then I will. Why is this the only... and I have mine turned down. Makes me happy. Oh, cool, it actually does do something. Yeah, so I literally have mine lowered already. Oh, never mind. I turned it down, I guess. Or I, I set, I left it at 10. I'll turn it down to eight now. be able to see what how big Gilgamesh Island is. This will be a good setup for tomorrow. So about four hours to play tomorrow after Xeno Gears, which will potentially be enough time to do this and finish up the Let's Play. Treasure. Island. There's no telling what 
trials await. Analysis mine? Mine! Wake up! Oh, in this way, I was enjoying such a restful sleep long. Wait, where are we? I need you to run an analysis of the needs in the area. Yes, right away. No hits. I can't offer any guidance. Interesting. Yet not unexpected. I'm detecting signals from all the protocols we've discovered thus far at the coordinates of the head. It would seem our quest for these artifacts is drawing to a close. I wish you the best of luck, Cloud. And this is so epic. Yeah, mate, you guys said it before, but genuinely everything about this feels like a DLC. It's honestly amazing that this is part of the main game. Alright, so it is pretty small. I was thinking it might be like another whole area. Not like, you know, as big as the other areas, but. This may just be a single thing. This is it. The mysterious landmass I've wanted to see since it first appeared. Gilgamesh Island. It's pristine, despite having been submerged. I assume the ocean must have shielded it from the magnetic fields. But the question remains, how does a once submerged island catalyze a dimensional distortion? It certainly gets the gears turning. Oh, excuse me. To review, we're after the Genji equipment, formerly known as Proto Relics, as well as the Bladesman of Legend who covets them. Both should be somewhere on this island, but where? And that is the last thing I would like you to investigate. This is so cool. I see a tower over there. One of the tower. is here. Aesthetic. Oh, how I have longed for this moment. Ever since they left my care, I have been counting the minutes until their return. The Swordsman Gilgamesh! Yes, you rogues, tis I, the Genji's chosen keeper, and I demand you relinquish them forthwith! Beacons of martial prowess, blemished and begrimed and befouled all. How could you be so utterly remiss in their care? Wasn't us. We found him like that. Mm-hmm. Unbelievable. Veritable pearls cast before swine. Fret not, my darlings. Daddy's here now. He's going to fix you up good as new. You'll see. It seems our battle will have to wait. In its place, the tempering shall be your charge. <laughs> you thief! Ha ha ha! Says the knave who stole them first! What did you call me? For that, and for the defilement of my beloved armor, you must atone! Fine. We'll fix him. 
And when we're done, we'll keep them. You forget yourself, and I'll do it. I think you mean your funeral. <laughs> oh, how the ass doth pray and bluster! <laughs> Very well. I shall take pity on you. <laughs> Your task is to travel round in search of ritual shrines, and at each, reforge the Genji in the fires of battle. As the flames lack my beauties, they shall grow stronger and regain their brilliance. Now, go forth and fight. Hasten their magnificent rebirth. You said it. You said rebirth. seems like they're very close so shouldn't take too long right materia missing oh we need max level summon materia to do the tempering Interesting. Kind of a random requirement, given that all it does is make him a bit stronger, but... Is that what all of them are gonna be? But what of the temporary boy? Until my treasures have been restored, you shall not... sure how to get to that shrine because it's inside. Yep, looks like it's going to be all the all the materia. Now it should be specifically like doing the the stones, right? So that gives us a bit more playtime because I was a little worried, like not worried, but I was like, oh, let's play might end tonight because it seemed like it was going to be a, a quick thing. But we'll get to do a bit more exploring for the let's play and get all these stones. And so maybe tomorrow afternoon, if we can get them all done in time, which will be fitting. End of the week. Start of the new Let's Play. The new Friday Let's Play, that is. So let's see. Got all of them in the grasslands. I want to do all the stuff. I want to do. I wanted to do the Queen's Blood quests, and I wanted to do 
the Gilgamesh thing on normal as part of our Let's Play before finishing up the Let's Play. And then after that, I'm just going to go crazy and do everything. That's why we're doing this now on normal. Uh, actually got almost everything done here. Not for the Let's Play, no. That's too much. Although, to be fair, the side quests are, like, pretty... Like, some of them are... are have a lot of story in them, which is good, but... People can always explore those on their own if they want to. And we'll certainly talk about them. And I'll probably talk about them in my review as well. And we did. We did. A couple of them. But yeah, for the Let's Plays, for all the, for all the games that we Let's Play, we usually just do the main game and then anything that like really sticks out is like something we want to do post game and then like super bosses usually I try to do in let's plays because I personally really like them but how many yeah I mean I wouldn't be completely opposed to just doing like these like the, the name to side quests but we're already 90 hours in, so. And that leaves something for for people that watch the Let's Play but do want to play the game at some point to do an experience on their own. Okay, where are we missing? There's summon crystal here, here. Thanks, Ratchet. Yeah, a couple people have told me that. Hopefully they fix it soon. I'm only playing tomorrow afternoon and then taking a break for the weekend, although I might be here Saturday night for a bonus stream, but we won't be, you know, jumping back in for nine hours until next Monday. So hopefully, hopefully it's fixed by then, because I've heard a lot of people talk about it, so Square's got to know about it by this point. Gotta be at least on their radar. I don't know anything about it. I just know that it's uh, one of the later ones. And Livestream, Livestream told me the name of it just in case I accidentally ran into it. But I, f uh, oh, it's uh, can't stop, won't stop. That's the name of it. I don't know when I'll do the review. With Remake, I waited quite a bit because there was so much... So many people saying so many different things about the game that I kind of wanted to let the dust settle before I talked about it because I didn't want to be... I didn't want any of that lingering bias. This game, however, I'm pretty confident in my feelings about it in general. So I could do the review as early as now, but I also am extremely busy now with everything else and just playing the game, so. But hopefully soonish or, I mean, I don't, I, I'm pretty okay with it being whenever, honestly. I could do it sooner or I could wait until I've done everything and have an even bigger scope of knowledge. I'll probably just wait till I have the time, whenever that is. I'm not gonna rush it, but I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna rush it, but I'm also not gonna force myself to do literally everything before doing it. So, <laughs> we'll just see. We shall see. How do you get to this thing? I, I don't even see the crystal, like the breakable crystals. to climb. Up there, maybe.
I drove past one. Nice. I was looking at the mountains. I wasn't looking at the ground. Cactrot. sure I'm sure people will complain I mean people will complain about anything so Dude, at this point, at this point, they could tell me that part three is going to be. Analysis complete. I managed to extract the necessary data from the crystal. This should allow me to string. Exciting. At this point, they could tell me that part three is going to be called Final Fantasy seven pudding. And I'd be like, let them cook. See where they're going with this. Obviously, they have a plan. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. If part three comes out and I have an issue with it, I'm not going to lie. I will tell you my issue with it. I'm going to always be honest, but at this point, I'm willing to let them do what it is they're going to do, and then I will criticize it. I'm not going to sit here and criticize them before it comes out. I'm not going to sit here and say, well, they did this and this and two, so three is going to suck. Like a lot of people are saying about two because one ended so crazily, so obviously two is just going to be a complete disaster. And we had this whole conversation yesterday about how we all thought that the Zack thing was going to like ruin the story and then it ends up being kind of a perfect little thing that goes alongside but doesn't doesn't affect anything in a way that ruins the story everyone was convinced it was like well multiverse we're going Avengers mode boys it didn't turn out to be that way at all it's kind of frustrating how how much people want to be Square Enix super fans, but then not trust them to make good games, you know? But that might be more of just an issue of the video game landscape in general. We don't really trust any of the video game creators anymore, and honestly, there's a good reason for that. Many of them are just in horrible places right now. Most of them have given us not only no reason to trust them, but a lot of reasons to distrust them over the past couple years. So, I don't blame people for being negative, overly negative before the game even comes out, but I do feel like at this point I trust them to at least bring this series to a satisfying conclusion. One. I'm calling it now. 
They're gonna drop the R thing, and the third part's gonna be called Homecoming. And everyone's gonna be bamboozled. Part three is gonna be called Promise. You know, I like, I like that idea, but man, is Final Fantasy VII Promise like the worst name for a game ever? <laughs> like, it just sounds terrible. <laughs> that just sounds like something that like no one would want to buy. Like, it's just a bad name. <laughs> Imagine the GameStop employees trying to sell that. That just sounds awful. How do you get people excited for that? It is probably Reunion. It's just kind of funny that they already called Crisis Core Reunion. They accidentally shot their Analysis shot. Complete. This should allow me to mm -hmm. oh. Song sounds so Final Fantasy 16. Especially with the this part. How do I only have oh, there's one there. Freaking good luck finding that. Rebirth reborn would be a marketing disaster. Why? Final Fantasy VII Reborn. Too similar? You don't think Remake and Rebirth are too similar, though? I mean, I think they already kind of said, you know what, screw marketing when they decided to not call it Part 2. You know? <laughs> Like that, if they were truly trying to like market the game the best, they would have called it part two. But like, they're they're sticking to their guns and saying like, no, we're gonna make it this cool naming thing. So I think I think reborn is 100% possible. I actually kind of like that name too. You know, I didn't even really think about it, but all the people complaining that the game is, like, not faithful enough to the original because of, like, stupid crap. I mean, technically, the game's not even called Final Fantasy VII Remake anymore. I mean, technically. But technically, this is... Rebirth, not remake. Can't even really make that argument, can you? I mean, you can, because it's the remake trilogy, but... Funnily, it, it is kind of... It is kind of funny, it's like the sign in the name anymore. I don't know, that makes me so upset. Like, 
especially if they do end up calling it Final Fantasy VII Reunion. I'm going to really question why they called it Crisis Core Reunion. Like, because even from the beginning, I didn't really understand why it was called that. I don't know. Square Enix has always been awful with naming things, so I don't know why we're surprised. We're talking about the company that called Stranger of Paradise Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy. to mention intergrade intermission which if i had to give a if i had to give a fat trophy for the worst name ever <laughs> it might have to go to intermission intergrade for being like sounding awful making no sense and being a pr nightmare like all in one it's the whole trinity it's the holy trinity of bad names no one understood what they were buying. No one understood what it meant. And to this day, it still sounds dumb. <laughs> they truly, they truly blew it with that name. I don't know what they were thinking. No idea what they were thinking. All right, I gotta get up there. I gotta find my way over there again. So yeah, I, I mean... I told you, I have faith that they're gonna make the third game great. I do not have faith that they're gonna call it a good name. I hope they do, but I... At this point... I can't give them credit for naming things. I, I mean... We, we, we may be looking at the best name in the series with Rebirth. Rebirth is a good name. Not 100% sure what was rebirthed, but that's beside the point, I guess. I mean, let's be real, guys. This isn't even the Final Fantasy. I mean, what, what are they doing? What kind of name is that? They called it Final Fantasy and they planned three games. Like, what are they doing out here? That's downright false advertising, if you ask me. I saw that I saw that interview where they said Final Fantasy isn't a series that we can see ourselves ever ending. So I mean time to change the name. Time to call it Next Fantasy. <laughs> the 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 fantasy after the previous one. Just call it Fantasy. <laughs> fantasy 17. this stuff again. Have fun. Just call it gaming. This is the same company that named a game 358 over two days. At least that one, like, there was an explanation for it, though. Now, tower. It was a terrible explanation, but it was there was an explanation. I mean, 
I'm still trying to figure out what a type zero is, so. What is my Chocobo doing? Singing the song of his people. Swag, swag, swag. Ooh, is this it? How's it going, Lily? Oh, yeah. Finally. That's true, we never did get the chocobo dance at the farm. I don't know why you guys want me to do a review. Zoran just did the whole review. I don't have to do a review now. We got it covered. Easy as that. <laughs> you, did not, you did not just say me, Goo Goo Gaga. Thought my jokes were bad. I want to go back to that part where the the farmer dude was like, "If you're on a chocobo, you'll get past the Midgard Swarmer just fine," and then like skip to the Midgard Swarmer jumping out of the water and blasting us, being like, and then we were not fine. <laughs> I like how the creepy music still plays here. I love that this area has like a cool lore behind it now. Like this is the, the queen's place. It honestly makes this area so much cooler now. And when we first found it, it was just like these ancient ruins. It was like, oh, what are these? And then come to find out they actually have lore behind them. Area school. It's a cool place for a cash. Sticking with Final Fantasy VII Refund. It's a good guess, man. I'd, I'd put money on that, definitely. I agree with you that that's definitely going to be the name, but let's bet on it anyways, just so you can make some money. What do you think? <laughs> this is free money in your pocket. I just want to support. Just want to support my my buds, you know. Just want to support my pal. It's 
telling you, man, it's gonna be so funny if they just straight up do not call it RE something. The divine sanctuaries of Gunjata hold knowledge of Kunjata. According to folklore, this fantastical being is the tutelary of the forest. I'm gonna laugh so hard. Thus, when disaster struck the Mako reactor, many believed in the result of Kunjata's bestial wrath. I'm calling it now. If they don't go with the re, it's gonna be homecoming. But it's probably gonna be re union. They can call it Final Fantasy VII Definitive Edition after the best mod ever made for the game. Kappa. Whoa, this is tough. First one I ever failed. Reimagine. Recollection. I think he's a bull and doesn't really have feelings like that, but okay, sure. Let's go with that, Chadley. Um, you know, it will genuinely be really interesting if uh, they go with some crazy name. Because, I mean, this is Square Enix we're talking about, so, like, it's not completely off the table that they go with some crazy name. Like, you know, and they make it, like, part of their marketing, you know, like, they call it something really weird and they're like, oh, it's going to be so different. Rehearsal. <laughs> Revelations. Revengeance. Re I, they they better not call it Revelations. That's that's way too cringe. That's like every movie quote ever. Every movie subtitle ever. Don't call it Revelations. Please. That's that's gross. They have a honestly Reunion is so good. It's so it's such a shame that they blew it on Crisis Core. And to be fair, it can you can call Crisis Core Reunion and call Part Three Reunion, but it's just like kind of lame. But like Reunion really is the best name for it, and they they built up the Reunion throughout this game, but it never actually happened. So uh, you know, it would be like the perfect name. Um, oh, you know that was one thing that I wanted to talk about. One thing that I did kind of forget to mention. Um, what do you guys think about the reunion not being the reunion? That threw me for a big loop during that final cutscene. Um, the reunion is not what it was in the original. In the original, it was the theory of them, the clones coming together. In this one, Sephiroth specifically says the reunion is the worlds colliding. Which, like... It's kind of weird because they collide, but only really partially, so Zack can fight with us, and then, like, that's it. Them colliding doesn't really have do anything else. So I'm, I'm, yeah, I feel like it's, it's got to kind of be a wait and see kind of thing because I don't even, I still don't even know what Sephiroth's goal was. My thought was that 
he was trying to join the worlds so that he could destroy all of them and get the life stream from all of them and become even stronger. Then, you know, in the original, he blows up one planet and takes all the life stream and becomes a god. In this one, he's blowing up all the planets of all the worlds, of all the universes, and getting all the life stream and becoming super god. You know? So that was my thought. But, like, he never says that. He just says the worlds are colliding in darkness and despair, and I'm going to use the power of despair. And then, but because he combines the worlds, it means we get help from Zack and apparently Aerith 2 or something. So, like, I don't know. It's weird. Like, it's, it's, it's kind of weird. Sephiroth kind of screws himself, which is why he probably, which is why he says, like, I underestimated you. But, yeah, I think we kind of need to see what happens after this because I don't think the combining of worlds really helped him in any way. And I don't see how that being the reunion instead of what it was in the original helps the story either. So, I don't know, I was, I'm a little, like, mixed on that. But maybe, maybe in part three they're like, oh... We're still going to the reunion, and then the second reunion ends up being the one from the original, or something, you know? Um, well, the Black Materia isn't even activated yet, because we haven't gotten a real Sephiroth yet, if that's even what's going to happen in Part 3. They could change it, but if we're sticking to the original game, then we haven't even seen the true Sephiroth yet. Which is pretty interesting, given how strong he is in this game. Yeah. That's, that's very interesting. But it's, again, something that doesn't make too much sense theorizing about, because it's going to all change in part three. But I hope we get some, like, insight into what Sephiroth was really trying to do here, because it doesn't make a lot of sense. I thought Aerith was lying. You don't think she was lying? Possibly, Subaki. I didn't think about that, but possibly. See, I'm... I gotta look through everything again, but... I'm kind of of the opinion that, like... Aerith lied to Cloud to try to stop... Fate. Like, her idea was... Oh, I'm going to tell Cloud it's a fake. And then he's not going to give it to Sephiroth. And then I'm going to, like, save the future. But then the white... The white whispers come and they're like... No, this Aerith knows too much. We gotta defy fate so we can get the black materia to Sephiroth. Because that's what's supposed to happen. Kind of thing. Like, I think, I think the reason the Whispers are still here is because Aerith is doing some voodoo. That's kind of my running guess at the moment. Because why else would the Whispers be here? Everything's going to plan other than Sephiroth, like, making crazy universes and stuff. But, like, everything should be going to plan. Why do the, why do the Whispers have to change it? Plus, we defeated the Whispers and defied fate or whatever. So, like, what's the point now? But I think it's because Aerith is messing with stuff. And so they have to they have to try to get it back to normal. Or at least the black ones do, and the white ones seem to be helping Aerith, but like we don't really know.
I thought that we just defeated Sephiroth and therefore got the Black Materia back, but I guess he does just fly away. He doesn't, like, give it to us, so... There may be two. There's two Holy Materias, so... There might be two Black Materias. But that wouldn't make a lot of sense, because if, if Sephiroth left with the Black Materia, then Meteor would just be summoned right away. Because he would go give it to true Sephiroth. So I don't know. Unless maybe he needs both or something. Like, there's some weird rule now where he needs both or something. Like, I don't know. Because he said it was, like, the key. I don't know. All, all stuff that's going to be explained in part three, I'm sure. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully is explained. Yeah, it's almost like there's some kind of weird thing where like he can't just use the black materia to summon meteor he needs like something else and maybe that's why he split the worlds that's kind of i mean that makes sense right maybe in this universe the black materia isn't enough to summon meteor you need like the black materia from two worlds or you need the black materia plus something else from another dimension so that's why he split the worlds in the first place but then because he split the worlds to get this special power to get Meteor, he accidentally gave Aerith the power to also go between worlds. And so she screwed stuff up. And that's why he's like, I underestimated you. Because he didn't think she could do that. And that's also why he says like, oh, this is where you've been hiding. So that's my guess. He split the worlds even either to get Meteor or for some other reason ultimate power, whatever. But he didn't realize that Aerith would also be able to take advantage. But I don't think we'll know exactly what that is until part three. But maybe there's some, like, other thing you need to activate the Black Materia. <laughs> no, I haven't changed costumes yet. I should do that. Yeah, the Gi are really... Well, it said in the temple... said something about, like, they're the... They're, like... I, I forget what it said. It, it said, like, they're the Undying or, like, some, like, special term, they said. Where, like, they're so... Their souls are so evil or their souls are removed from their body or something. So, like, the bodies themselves can't return. They said something. They used some terms. So I don't think they're aliens. I think they're just, like some kind of being that can't return to the planet. Kind of like uh, zombies or something. But maybe. Maybe they're aliens. I don't know. I just thought I thought there was some there was something I heard in Temple that made me think they weren't aliens. Okay. Well then there you go. Then maybe they are aliens. That's pretty weird. I wonder if they're just from another planet. Well, okay, they didn't come from the planet. That could mean that they were formed without life stream. That doesn't necessarily mean alien. That could just mean they weren't created by life stream. Therefore, when they die, they don't return to the life stream. Almost like saying a zombie wouldn't go to heaven because it's not, it doesn't have a soul or something. You know, like, like it wasn't created as a regular being with a soul and a everything, so when they die, they just disappear. Maybe. Because they were bad, they don't deserve to return to the live stream? Hmm. I do remember there being a line, I think Gene Natak said it, where he said, like, we're too something to return to the planet. That would be really interesting if uh, the Gi were from a planet and Genova was from another planet, and then we have our planet, there's like three, three different planets. I don't, I, I hope they don't really go too far into that because we already have the different worlds meaning like universes or like uh what do, what do you call them not universes uh i guess dimensions parallel dimensions 
So if we start talking parallel dimensions, but then also talking different planets, I guess it's gonna get way too convoluted. So they should just leave it. Just be like, we have our planet and we have different versions of our planet and just leave it. I do not want to get any more into the weeds than that because it's not necessary and it's not really Final Fantasy VII either, you know? That's where we're getting to like Avengers Endgame where it's like, we don't need, <laughs> it's not Final Fantasy VII really. Yeah, I mean, you can say that other worlds exist. I just don't want it to be, like, a big thing. Like, I don't want it to be important that the Gi came from some specific planet or something. You know? In Genova, it's never explained where she comes from. She's just... She herself is like a planet. She's like a planet that travels to other planets and destroys them and then travel. You know, she's like a... a parasite of space. And so, like... We don't need to know her origins. Like, we don't need to know where she comes from. We just need to know that's what she does, you know? That's just getting too convoluted for the sake of explaining stuff that doesn't need to be explained. Sure, maybe in some, like, intel thing you can say she came from Chrono Trigger planet. <laughs> Whatever. But, like, you know, we don't need that to be, like, a sole part of the story. The story is supposed to be about our characters. It's supposed to be about Cloud and Aerith and Zack and Sephiroth. We don't need to get that far into the weeds, you know? Even even the multiple... The multiple uh, dimensions were, was enough to throw a lot of people off, but in the end it wasn't that important, so I think it was fine. But... Yeah, I just don't want him to get too crazy. I don't want him to go too far out. Um, there was something else I wanted to say, but I don't remember what it was now. Genova is a true final boss in part three would actually be a sick improvement. So you're in the camp of, it was Genova the whole time, and Sephiroth was just used. It's a pretty compelling theory. I mean, when I did the Sephiroth in depth, it kind of made me realize that there's a very, very good chance that Sephiroth died basically when he got kicked off the bridge. And ever since then, it's been Genova the whole time. And at the very least, it's part Genova the entire time. But, yeah. Now, if you if you told me that Sephiroth died the moment he fell off that bridge, and ever since then it's just been Genova the whole time, 100% Genova, I would be willing to hear the argument. Like, it's a very, it's a very good argument. It, it makes a lot of sense. It's cooler to think it's Sephiroth, and it's cooler to think that Sephiroth has a specific grudge to Cloud and not Genova, but, like, it all makes sense in the end that it could have just been Genova pulling the strings the whole time. Yeah, I've read a good amount of the intel. I haven't read all of it yet. I'll probably read it all at the end. Once I have it all. But I read most of it as I got it. Oh, you were asking earlier, I remember what I was going to say, you were asking earlier about didn't humanity die in the original? I have an old theory video going over the Armageddon theory. It's... It's not super convincing, but it is a theory that exists that could be true. But I think most people... I mean, like, the thing about the Armageddon theory that's cool is that from a video, from a, from a video game design standpoint, it's a really awesome ending because it leaves it up to interpretation. Does, does humanity die? Do they not die? That's where you get to interpret as a player. Is humanity truly worth saving? And that's the whole point of the ending. It sucks that the compilation exists, to be honest. Because the compilation just says, nope, they lived. 
but when just the original existed, and if we go, you know, like I said before, I have three canons. The original game, and then the original game with compilation, and then remake. If we're just talking about the original lore, it's super cool that we don't know. Because it feeds into a lot of the cool themes of the game of, like, are humans inherently evil? Um, for example, Shinra and Avalanche. Shinra are the bad guys and Avalanche are the good guys, but the Av but Avalanche are so also aren't fully good guys. They kill a lot of innocent people. They are terrorists. They, you know, a lot of things they do could be construed as evil. And so even though you're the good guys, you're not exactly the good guys. So when you get to the end of the game, there is this morality question of did we do enough for the planet to want to save humanity? Or is the planet gonna look at us and say, well, they were more evil than you, but you're also evil, and I think we need to just wipe out humanity and start over. And so that's what makes the Armageddon theory so awesome, is that it really ties into the themes of the game of like every human has their flaws and every human is inherently sinful. And did we do enough to prove to the planet that we deserve to live? even though we're slowly destroying it. And it's incredibly relevant even today. I mean, they could have never known how relevant Final Fantasy VII would be in 2024, but with how much we're destroying our planet and how much, you know, we continue to not listen to the planet's cries, uh, you know, it's all the more relevant now. Do humans deserve to live on this planet, given what they do to it? And so it's whether or not the Armageddon theory is true or not, the video game design aspect behind it is awesome. It's really, really cool to think about, you know, those morality questions of do we deserve to live on this planet that we're sucking the life out of daily? So, but is it, does it have a lot of merit? Not really. <laughs> the compilation obviously disproves it, but also like, the, the laughing of the kids at the end and Red 13 being alive but no having no other humanity like and also he's heading towards Midgar which probably means Vincent's alive and how would Red 13 survive if like like why would the planet save Red 13 but not humanity like there's a lot of weird questions that don't seem to be answered but it's still a really cool theory it is possible it is 100% possible that as soon as Meteor disappears, the live stream destroys all humanity, leaves Red 13, and then the planet just has grass growing on it for the rest of the time. <laughs> or maybe, you know, another cool idea is like, um, the, the live stream wiped out humanity because the whole idea is the live stream appears and gets rid of everything evil. So it gets rid of Meteor, but it also gets rid of humanity because humanity were the ones that caused all this problem in the first place, right? So it wipes out all, all humanity, wipes out Meteor, all that's left are animals and Red 13, right? And then it's the, the time skip where it shows Red 13 and his, and his cubs. At the end of that, there's the laughing children, right? You could interpret that as, oh, humanity's still around because we just heard laughing children. Or you can interpret that as the planet just decided to reboot humanity. All those years later, it's now deciding, all right, let's give this another shot. And those laughing children are the start of a, of a new humanity starting 500 years later. Or it could be the cubs. Or it could just be a laughing thing because children laughing. <laughs> or it could be a, hey, buy Advent children on DVD. Could be a lot of things. <laughs> they could have known they were going to make a movie and they made a laughing, they made laughing children. Could be a red herring. But, yeah. Could be that it's restarting humanity then. Oh, you haven't watched my in-depth of Red 13. You should watch that. It'll it'll also describe it'll also describe to you who the the girl cub is in Cosmo Canyon. 
that you can see on, in one of the pictures. Yeah, it's on my YouTube channel. I can link it if you want. All right, well, anyways, this was a really fascinating conversation. I'm glad we got to have this conversation during the Let's Play, because I think we'll get a lot of cool, interesting tidbits from the uh, YouTube community as well. No, I don't dislike the compilation. I love the compilation, but it does ruin some of the... It, and it does retcon some stuff, too, unfortunately, the original. That's why I like to look at it separately, you know? Um... And actually, I really like Advent Children. I, I like that movie a lot. I know it gets a lot of crap, but I think it's a fun movie. <laughs> Not a great movie, but it's a fun movie. Anyways, thank you for having this conversation with me. I look forward to hearing YouTube's thoughts as well. Let's uh, end the Let's Play for today, and we'll be back on it Friday afternoon and might be able to finish it. Um... If we can finish off the summon materia and then go do Gilgamesh, we should be able to do that in less than four hours. And then that's probably going to be the end of the official Let's Play. And then we'll move on to doing all the post-game stuff, all the hard stuff, all the stuff that we do after that. And of course, we'll have highlights and stuff of that on YouTube. Don't worry. But in terms of the official Let's Play, that's probably, probably be the last thing we do. Um, I also thought about potentially uploading some... Um, specific things to like the Patreon or something as like a bonus to the Let's Play, maybe like a ha the hard mode playthrough or something. So we'll make a decision on that. But uh, for now, we'll see you in the next episodes of Let's Play Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. We'll see you there. Peace.